Robert Ward is my name. I'm the marketing director here at the National College of Ireland. And on behalf of the college, you're very welcome here for the second in our Go Further series. Um, it's a delight and pleasure to have you all here. So thank you for coming. So don't forget, hashtag Go Further with NTI. Uh, we're delighted to partner with Independent News and Media uh, for tonight's event to discuss the business of today's newspapers and the impact of digital and data. Uh, and tonight we're going to hear from Dr. Mick Kerrigan, who's the principal data scientist at INM, and he'll discuss how INM used data in their business. I'd like to start by getting you to cast your mind back. Well, probably many of us weren't alive, but cast your mind back to the 1940s and imagine what the, the world of a, a journalist or an editor or somebody working in, in print media or in publishing at the time would have had to deal with. Um, this is very, very difficult to try and work out how your product is performing. Um, it's very hard to discover uh, at, at a deep level whether the changes you are making, whether you're introducing a new article, making a new uh, editor in the, in the business, or you are uh, deciding to put a supplement within your paper, it's hard to know how you're succeeding and how things are going. Um, it's also very difficult to know what's going on in the world unless you go outside and actually report on the news um, and actually go and observe that news happening and report on it. So the, the main KPI that you have within your business is circulation. Um, that is, for those of you who, who are, wouldn't be aware, is the, um, the difference between the number of papers that you print on a given day and those that get returned and those that maybe you give away for free. So that gives you an indication on a daily basis of how many papers you've sold and how many people are buying your product. But that KPI is quite coarse in nature. Uh, it gives you an, a very high level KPI. It's very hard to drill down and say, well, what's selling my paper? Is it the, uh, the supplement? Is it the piece on the front page? Is it the agony ant column on page 14? What's actually selling my, my publication? It's also not very timely information. So your paper's gone to print, it's gone out, it's been sold in the shops, and then you get some insight on it. And you now need to apply that insight to the future. But you can't react really in, in real time to how people are buying your papers. Uh, different people within your organization will also have very different opinions on, on how they view circulation. So the, the printers will use circulation to understand how many copies they need to print on a given day. Um, advertisers will use that number to go out and sell advertising within your newspaper uh, and say, okay, this is how many people your ad is going to reach on a daily basis. Um, and your editor will use it to understand the trend. Okay, so we've made a lot of changes in our business and over the last six weeks, eight weeks, 12 months, whatever it might be, the traffic, or sorry, the, 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 the circulation of our newspaper has gone up or has gone down. Um, so if we take a look and fast forward to today, um, the first noticeable difference is that in addition to being able to buy the paper in a printed form, you have a number of other channels through which users can consume the content that you're producing, whether it be on their desktops while they're at home or at work, uh, on, the, on their mobile phones. Uh, traditionally, mobile phones were on the go, but now very much so on the couch or in bed or um, all those different aspects. Tablets are very ubiquitous, less mobile, a little bit more again on the couch. Um, and then new technologies like wearables, um, Apple Watches, and, and those sorts of technologies. And the usage and behavior of these systems is very, very different. Um, so when we look at our traffic, we see desktop behavior being predominantly, or say, peaking uh, Monday to Friday between 9 and 5 p.m. Mobile behavior is much more 24-7. Uh, it, it pans out across the week. And the peaks tend to be early in the morning, late in the evening, uh, when people are in bed or at either ends of the day or on the bus or are maybe lying in bed before they fall asleep and want to catch the content before they go and do that. Um, tablets then have a weekend behavior, early mornings. Um, and Apple Watches, we're only learning now uh, from the, the new apps we've released how people are actually consuming that. Um, so you have all these new channels and you have many different ways to get at that content. So you can reach the content directly. You can go to your web browser and, and type in independent.ie and come straight to the site. Or you can go to Google and you can search for some topic that you know is ongoing. Uh, you can go to social media and you'll see content that we're pushing out or that your friends are pushing out. Um, and you can go to uh, content aggregators like Google News or Flipboard where they'll be featuring particular pieces of content. What this gives us between the, the actual products that we're producing um, and the content within them uh, and the different channels 
All of this is giving us data, and we have so much rich data about the behavior of what people are doing. And the guy in 1940s, I think, would be quite envious of what we were able to do. Um, we can push a piece of content out on our platform and see how it's performing from a direct perspective. We can push out a, a social media post to drive traffic to that piece of content. Within minutes of putting it live, we can see if that content is performing well or not. Uh, we can uh, be able to react to that, change headlines, uh, add new content, push harder, push less, back off a story and move to something else. So you can be much more effective with your resources in the newsroom. Um, so there's lots we can do with that data to understand uh, what's going on. So conversely to the circulation number that we used to have in our business, we now have a fine granularity, very timely and extremely fresh information on what's actually going on within our business. Um, one thing that it has is a sort of an indirect effect is it used to be the adage that you know, today's newspaper is tomorrow's fish and chip paper. That's not really the case with content today because with, S with good SEO and good Google search, um, content can live for days, weeks, months. We often see content come uh, periodically around where content from 2013 will suddenly resurface as people, uh, new news topics come up and people look back to see what the history was of that news topic, they search, they find old content. So we see content going back as far as 2009 popping back up into our, into our content dashboard saying, whoa, why is that doing well? Uh, and we can then resurface it in social media because obviously it's timely and what people want to find out. So there's a lot more longevity in the content that a journalist can create and how that can be consumed. So we've looked at it a little bit from the content perspective. But data is also extremely valuable from the product perspective. And you have to think of these things as, as products. Um, so I wanted to give you an example of something that we've done within INM over the last year um, that really used data and changed the product for the better and changed it from, from a traffic perspective and from a revenue perspective. So if we go back to the end of Q1 of, of 2014, and we saw, we were observing, and we can see that the blue line is desktop, the red line is mobile, and the purple line is tablet, showing the number of unique users that come to the, the site every single day. So we saw this increase in mobile traffic. Over a three month period, a 90% increase in our mobile audience on a daily basis. That's a huge increase, and, and some of you think, okay, we need to do something about this. There's an opportunity here to react and do something. So we looked at traffic and said, well, traffic, eh, it's not gone up as well as we would have liked with that audience growing by 90%. So we need to react and we need to do something about this. So we brought together our data team, the design team, the development team, our editorial team, and said, what experience do we want to deliver on a mobile device to satisfy this audience, this new growing audience that we have on a mobile platform? And we released that in May of 2014. And we saw an initial uptick. And it probably would have been an even bigger uptick if we weren't heading into this sort of June, which is a, generally a little bit lower than May. So you can see the desktop and tablet probably come away a little bit, and mobile actually grows a little bit. We looked at it, looked at the behaviors, analyzed how people were using the new product that we put in the market, understood what, uh, how they were using it and what we could do differently, and released a new edition then in uh, the end of June. Uh, and that, again, showed an improvement, looked at the data again, understood what we could do, and released a new version at the end of August. And we could see that within, by the end of October, we'd actually managed to grow our mobile audience by a factor of four. So it's a four times increase in the amount of daily traffic we're getting from mobile. And that's just by thinking and observing the data, observing what is going on with the audience and how they're using that data, uh, using that content and the product. And, uh, and delivering them a better experience. And if we follow that trend on, we've been doing iterations of this and we've been growing our audience. Where we find ourselves today is that at the end of June 2015, mobile is now the major driver of traffic on independent.e. It now eclipses desktop traffic. Desktop's not gone away. The audience hasn't gone anywhere. They're still reading content on their desktop, but they're now checking also on their mobile devices. They're consuming more frequently at different times of the day. Um, and, and that's you know, a huge, to be able to do that in your business, to take this line that's so low down and be able to bring it up to, to eclipse your main traffic driver. You couldn't do this without really key understanding how your audience behaves. Um, 
some of you may be wondering, well, how did the audience change in that time? So if we go back to the 90% growth in Q1 of 2014, if we follow that out to last uh, the end of June, we now have 280% growth since January 2014. So mobile now is nearly double the size. The mobile audience is now nearly double the size of the, the, mo of the uh, desktop audience. And certainly if you were to consider tablet as mobile device, the two together dramatically eclipse desktop. So people, we're, that's where people are consuming their content and we have to think about that now in everything that we do in the newsroom, in everything that we do in designing our products is how are people going to consume this in a mobile environment. Um, I want to talk to you about something we are doing and something we're, we're looking forward into the future as well. So um, if we look at the, the printed edition of the paper, the front page of the paper is the most important uh, real estate that we have available to us because it's the thing that the audience sees when they walk into a, a shop and they buy that paper. That's the, the top headline, the top photograph is what captures your attention and says, I want to buy this product. Um, that's been the case back in the 40s and it's still the case today. Um, for uh, a digital platform, that is true to some extent. We now have obviously more channels where people can get to our content. Many people come from social media or come from search um, and they come straight to an article page. They never actually see our homepage. But the homepage is still very important for those people who do come directly. The key difference between these products is what we've traditionally done, what most news publishers do, is it's, it's a one-for-one. One. Uh, it can change more frequently. We can adapt the front page more regularly because obviously we don't have the confines of having to print it to a, a physical piece of paper. But um, it's traditionally a one-size-fits-all solution. Um, we're able to uh, only show the same thing to all of our users. So what we're looking at at the moment is being able to explore the behaviors of our customers and say, can we deliver a better experience to our customers? Can we make it so that they're able to get a more personalized, a more targeted experience when they come to our homepage? Because there are days when I come and I see a story here about John Delaney in, in the celebrity section, that doesn't really interest me. But there's other great content that does interest me and I want to put that content front and center uh, in front of the user. So why can the front of independent.ie not give me the information on the golf and, and some Irish news and some business news if those are the sorts of interests that I have? Or if I'm a user who's more interested in travel and style and lifestyle content, why can that not provide that information and give it to me up front where I can, where I can really experience it and, and not have to dig around trying to find that particular content? So that's, a, that's an area we're exploring at the moment. Um, we have a, a team uh, looking at that with the data science team. Uh, one thing I did want to touch on, and I know there are people here who, who maybe are considering courses in NCI, or maybe finished a course in NCI, uh, and are thinking, well, what role could I play in a, in a publisher? What sort of roles are there for data type people uh, within publishers? Um, the data scientist, I think we've probably touched. It's a, a sort of a strategic role where you look at uh, trends in data, behavior of, of users over a long period of time. Um, you probably work with other roles, especially in, for example, the personalization projects, maybe designing algorithms, maybe designing approaches to, to mining the data. Um, but there's other types of roles as well. The, the newsroom analyst, we have a, a great guy, uh, Frank Whelan, who, who works within the independent.ie newsroom, and he is on the, has got his finger on the pulse of the traffic every single day. So whereas the data scientist is looking at it over weeks and months and years, he's looking at it over the last 15 minutes. What traffic is working right now? What can I do to make a difference? What can we change? What can we do differently? Um, we also are not just looking at the content in terms of, uh, sorry, looking at this from a content perspective, but also from an advertising perspective, which, which Mitchell will touch on later. And we also have e-commerce uh, products as well. So uh, there's a role for analysts in those areas where you are exploring the conversion funnel of a particular product and trying to improve the conversion of customers through it. Or working on a campaign, trying to understand how we can drive more people to that campaign, where it's succeeding, where it can be improved, um, and that, that's a, a very important role within the business. Uh, Paul's going to talk to us a little bit about data journalism. So uh, how do data journalism, and Paul's going to tell you this, it's, not, it's nothing new, right? It's been going on for a long time. It's just it's different now. Um, and uh, that's a, a very important role where we can now get leads from data. And, and, and Paul will, I don't want to ruin Paul's talk, so um, I'll shut up and let Paul uh, continue. Um, and then the last role is probably more technical. Um, so product management, software engineering, software architecture. For, the first, for one of the first times, we've, we've got a, a much bigger development team within the, in the independent, because not only are we now maintaining 
the actual um, systems themselves, the websites, the apps. But we're also looking at behaviorally storing data, managing how we expose that data, how we use it within our platforms, how we deliver personalization, how we deliver targeting um, within our products. And that involves a number of different roles that are thinking about designing those products and implementing and architecting those products. So there's definitely a role, a role there. Um, but probably the take home message from uh, that, that piece of information is that every single role within the newsroom, no matter who you are, you have to be thinking about data all the time. You will be made responsible as a journalist for some target. And if you're not working towards that target, or if you're working towards that target but you're not looking at the data, you'll miss something and you won't achieve what you're trying to achieve. So all roles within the business have to become more aware of data and how they work. So that probably wraps it up for me, and I'll pass over to Paul, who's going to tell us a little bit about the evolution of data journalism. And just excuse us for two seconds, because I have to switch the mics over. <laughs>